I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, my second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's going on, guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. Today, doing another mock draft. If you missed my last one, it was crazy. Did a lot of trades, and it was kind of like the everything goes unpredictable aspect this one's gonna be a little bit more different it's gonna be you know more true continuity style all the draft picks stay the same no trades and and things that i think are actually realistic possibilities if you guys are still listening up to this point not clicking around i would highly recommend if you have any questions about your pick wait for me to explain the pick because I, I will explain it uh, and i'll tell you why i think that should happen so i hope you guys bear with me and uh, actually watch through the video otherwise you could be a little bit confused I'm sure many of you will skip around regardless and, and ask me annoying questions in the comments section. Starting off with pick number one, that's going to be Nick Bosa to the Arizona Cardinals. This is probably the best player in this draft. The Cardinals are a team that really could use some edge help. In actuality, I think this is probably a team that trades down and looks to take an offensive lineman. But if they don't, Nick Bosa makes a lot of sense here at number one. Cleland Furl at number two out of Clemson. I don't know why people are suddenly low on Cleveland Furl as a prospect. He looks absolutely unbelievable on tape. Explosiveness is there. The pass rush moves. Uh, he is truly a very, very good edge rusher, in my opinion. For all of you guys who don't think he'd go this high, tell me why. Please, like, actually be specific. Number three, Greg Little. Offensive tackle out of Ole Miss. Here's, uh, uh, people are going to be annoyed at this, probably, too, because um, they think it's going to be a reach, another reach. The value associated with some of these players now it's just from the NFL media, and, and not even that. Anyone can post a mock draft, right? It's all about how different people value different players. When people don't come up with originality in their mock drafts and they look at what other people do, um, it catches on, like the plague. I think Greg Little very well could be the best offensive tackle in this class. He's physical. He's great in pass uh, protection as well as going after uh, and being a physical mauler in the run game and I think other than anything else he's a left tackle you look at Jawan Taylor you look at Jonah Williams these are guys that play on the right side they're right tackles in college could potentially both of them move into right guard I think Jonah Williams is far more likely to move into offensive guard than Jawan Taylor is but Greg Little could be the only pure left tackle in the first round of any of these you know great offensive linemen so to the Jets who have Brandon Shell at right tackle I think Greg Little makes a ton of sense for the Jets here at number three. I don't really see it as much of a reach. Again, another team that could trade back. All top four teams that don't really need a quarterback, I think, could trade down. Speaking of number four, that is the Oakland Raiders, who maybe need a quarterback. Might get to that a little bit later. As Quinnen Williams goes to the Raiders here. I think the bottom line with this one is that it's good value for the pick. While I think they probably need edge more than they need an interior defensive lineman with P.J. Hall and with Maurice Hurst and potentially Jonathan Hankins if they choose to re-sign him. Quinton Williams is a really, really good player. You could be getting Fletcher Cox with him. That's pretty much my comparison. I think Fletcher Cox makes a ton of sense. And uh, if that's what the Raiders can get, I don't think they're going to pass him up at number four. And maybe he looks to go edge at the top of the second round or with one of your two first-round picks later. Not including this one. They have three first-rounders. Number five, Jonah Williams goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they need offensive line help. And Jonah Williams is a guy that can play right tackle, right guard. So I think he's plug-and-play. Uh, right now, maybe he doesn't start. Donovan Smith is a free agent. And DeMar Dotson is like 34. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Bucks handle that situation in free agency with re-signing um, some of their players are choosing to develop Jonah Williams behind DeMar Dotson or choosing to re-sign Donovan Smith. It's going to be interesting, but I think you do need to protect Jameis Winston if he is your franchise quarterback, uh, and Jonah Williams does make a ton of sense in that regard. Number six, my favorite team, the New York Giants. We're going Dwayne Haskins, quarterback out of Ohio State. The thing with Dwayne Haskins is that he's probably the best quarterback in this class, and in a world where no one is allowed to trade ahead of the New York Giants, Dwayne Haskins falls ahead of them, or falls right to them, and uh, they pull the trigger at number six and take their future franchise quarterback to learn maybe a year behind Eli and, uh, and take over the reins maybe midway through the season, maybe next year as a sophomore 
in the NFL. Who knows? Number seven, Devin White. I've seen a lot of guys mock defensive linemen to this team, and I understand that if Malik Jackson or Marcel Darius gets cut for cap reasons, yeah, maybe you'll look to go defensive lineman. But you, you took Tevin, or excuse me, Taven Bryan last year in the first round. I don't think you're really looking to go defensive line. And with maybe your first ideal quarterback off the board, I think you say, hey, we really haven't had the same linebacking core since Paul Puzlesny left. And Miles Jack's fantastic. Telvin Smith, fantastic. But I think Devin White adds more speed to this defense um, as a cover guy, as a situational pass rusher, as a box-to-box, sideline-to-sideline linebacker. I actually like this pick a lot for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number eight, Josh Allen, outside linebacker out of Kentucky. This is kind of a weird one. A lot of people see this guy as an edge guy. I don't. I think he's more of an outside linebacker. Uh, I think he's decent in coverage. He has fantastic size, but when you watch him on tape, he's not really a true edge rusher, in my opinion. His sack numbers are certainly inflated, but he doesn't really have a great array of pass rush moves that he goes to and wins effectively with. It's a lot of effort sacks and a lot of situational sacks. So I, I think the sack numbers is a pretty bad way to evaluate a college talent as Jalen Ferguson, who looks like a mid-round player. Uh, who I know you, probably, you guys probably seen him in the first round, and you're like, what are you talking about? This guy has no clue. Jalen Ferguson, to me, is not very good at all. Um, Josh Allen kind of struggles as a pass rusher as well. And, and But my point with Jalen Ferguson, he has a record all-time for the NCAA in sacks. He's not all that. Sacks don't tell this full story. Look at Nick Bosa. There's a reason he's going number one overall. He's not anywhere close to the all-time sack record in college football. We're going to move on. Pick number nine, the Bills. You got your franchise quarterback maybe in Josh Allen. You got to protect him, Juwan Taylor. Number 10, Drew Locke. After a fairly strong senior bowl, he looked like he was the probably the second best quarterback there. I think uh, maybe the third. I think Tyree Jackson was impressive sometimes, other times not. But really, the best quarterback in the senior bowl was Ryan Finley. I think Drew Locke has uh, maybe raised his stock slightly. I thought about putting Greedy Williams in here at number 10. But I think the Broncos, who have apparently been linked to Drew Locke, saying that he's their uh, number one QB. They like him the best of any quarterback in this class. I think John Elway is going to jump at the opportunity to take a uh, prototype quarterback and throw him into that Denver offense. Number 11, the Bengals take Cody Ford. I have him listed at OL. Played right tackle at Oklahoma. I think he translates more as an offensive guard. Could play left or right. Uh, Maybe even left or right tackle. He's a guy that can play probably four of the five offensive line positions. Very versatile. Very good. The Bengals, who need upgraded pass protection, take Cody Ford. Ja'Kai Polite to the Packers at number 12. He's an edge rusher. Would work well in the 3-4. This is what the Packers are looking for. Clay Matthews isn't cutting it. Old Nick Perry, who I believe is a free agent, also old and not cutting it. Ja'Kai Polite can potentially come in and be that future franchise edge rusher for you. Number 13, Ed Oliver. Why is he falling? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the teams picking ahead of him. Their top concerns are not defensive tackle. You get to a team that finally needs one, and at number 13... For the, what, the, th- the second time in the past five years, get another steal. First, Laramie Tunsil and now Ed Oliver. They've been making a living off of getting steals in the draft later than people thought. And here's Ed Oliver at number 13. I think it's a perfect fit. He's not falling past Miami. There's no way. Number 14, Rashawn Gary. Maybe a 3-4 defensive end. Maybe a 4-3 defensive end or defensive tackle. I think he's more of an inside player, uh, and I think he would work really, really well on this Atlanta defensive line that kind of needs a little bit a little bit of both with Vic Beasley being uh, a little bit ineffective and Grady Jarrett potentially testing free agency. You need to upgrade your defensive line. You need to get somebody else in there. And Rashawn Gary, who could be an edge rusher, although I think he probably uh, should slide in to play interior. You know, a lot of people have him listed as an edge. I have him listed as a defensive lineman. Versatility is a big thing for Rashawn Gary. He's a great athlete, very, very strong and powerful. Going to fit in and work really, really well in Atlanta. Number 15, Daniel Jones, quarterback out of Duke to the Washington Redskins. Alex Smith may never play another snap of football in his career, in his life. Daniel Jones could be your new franchise guy. You were likely going to make the playoffs before Alex Smith went down. Maybe all you're missing is a quarterback. 
Daniel Jones to the Redskins, although I think they're missing more than that. But, you know, maybe you might think that. Number 16, Montez Sweat to the Carolina Panthers. I've had Deontay Thompson in here forever, and he had kind of a weak uh, national championship against Clemson. That's kind of a, even saying it nice nicely. Uh, Montez Sweat is good, and you do need edge rushers, man. Julius Peppers is so old. He's like 38 now. And uh, I don't even know what his contract situation is. I think he might be a free agent this year or next year uh, if he doesn't retire before then. And then Mario Addison is a decent player for sure. Uh, but you need to go out and get someone that's going to be more effective and younger, I think, more than anything. Both of those players I just named, and Addison and Peppers, are both over 30, with Julius Peppers being well over 30. Why don't you get someone who's in their 20s? Maybe can have a prime in Carolina. Go edge rusher here at number 16. Let's move on. Number 17, Greedy Williams falls all the way to the Cleveland Browns here at number 17. And for a team looking for a real, true number two cornerback next to Denzel Ward, I think Greedy Williams at 17 fits the bill. Top 10 potential for sure, but if the mock draft, if the actual draft, I should say, plays out like this, uh, I think the Browns would jump at the opportunity and look to go defensive line in the second round. Dalton Reisner. Offensive lineman out of Kansas State to the Minnesota Vikings. I've had this in here forever. I, I just think it makes so much sense. Another versatile player can play offensive guard or offensive tackle. That's why I have him listed at OL instead of just OT or OG for guard or tackle. Um, but the Vikings need to protect Kirk Cousins. That was a big downfall for you last year. That's maybe why you didn't do as well as you would have liked. This is something that I think it needs to happen. The Vikings have to go offensive line here. They have to. Protect Kirk Cousins, number 19, A.J. Brown of the Tennessee Titans, could be the number one receiver in this class. And for the Titans, with a super weak receiving core, unbelievably weak, get another good receiver to go opposite of Corey Davis. And now you have actually a true duo. Number 20, Byron Murphy to the Pittsburgh Steelers. A lot of people were really upset when uh, I had him in the second round of my Giants mock draft video. I, I do off-season previews for each team. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Uh, a lot of people had him really mad when I had him in the second round. Even though the NFL draft projection committee had him as a second round player, he still could rise up boards depending on how his combine goes. And he's a good player. Uh, he could be here at number 20. He could be viewed as the number two cornerback in this class, maybe even the best to some teams. So I wouldn't be shocked to see the Steelers go Byron Murphy at number 20. Maybe they go DeAndre Baker Tough to say. Number 21, Nasir Adderley. Great senior bowl for him as well. He had an interception. Um, was beat over the top once. Wasn't burned, but he just didn't make a play on the football, and it was a long completion downfield. Uh, but Nasir Adderley, I think this is your Earl Thomas replacement. He's a comp to Earl Thomas. If you guys watch my prospect breakdown on him, again, make sure to subscribe if you're not already for more of those. I think he's, I think he's basically uh, Earl Thomas. Maybe not to the same level of Earl Thomas when he was coming out, but he's, you know, a very similar uh, body type. I think he offers fantastic range, speed, coverability, and he also can come up and lay the lay the boom, lay the wood, lay in pipe, bring back the Legion of Boom to Seattle. And this year, Adderley, I think, is a step in the right direction. You're not bringing back Earl Thomas. Number 22, Debo Samuel. Another great senior bowl performance. With the receiving class being so weird this year, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if some people had Debo Samuel as their number one, if they had A.J. Brown, if they had Nikhil Harry, if they had Kelvin Harmon, if they had D.K. Metcalf, if they had any number of players. Uh, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside could be somebody's receiver one. It's so close. It wouldn't shock me to see Debo go here to the Ravens at number 22. I think he's be a really, really good option in that offense. I think he's a, a classic Baltimore Ravens receiver. And, you know, you had... Steve Smith had a lot of success. I think John Brown was decent, but his contract is coming to an end here. Michael Crabtree's not cutting it. You need another receiver. Debo Samuel could be exactly that. A slot guy can also play him on the outside. Number 23, Andre Dillard. Not going to spend too much time on this. You got to protect Deshaun Watson. Your offensive line's terrible. You got to go offensive line here. Andre Dillard could be the best pure left tackle in this class. Greg Little we talked about earlier, but maybe it's Andre Dillard. He's available at 23. You're pulling the trigger. Number 24, here's Deontay Thompson. He falls down a little bit, but he's still one of the best safeties in this class. And I think he would make a very interesting pairing with Carl Joseph. Two really physical cornerbacks, or excuse me, safeties. 
Deontay Thompson having a little bit of uh, better coverability in general. And uh, John Gruden gets him an Alabama boy. Plays safety. Here's where things get a little interesting. Well, we're going to talk about 27. Trust me. I know it's going to be a very <laughs> a very uh, controversial pick, to say the least. I, trust me. I can explain it. Number 25, we're going Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons is such a good player. He does have what you might call potential off-the-field concerns. He beat the hell out of a lady uh, when he was in high school, I believe. I know that she said something real bad, apparently, about his uh, deceased nephews or nephew, and but you still can't you can't beat up a lady, probably. Um, no, that's more, definitely you can't beat up a lady, I think we'll, we'll say. Um, but he's such a good player, and I like Jeffrey Simmons a lot. I would hate to see him go to the Eagles here, but for a team that could use a real sick defensive lineman, uh, Jeffrey Simmons would be a great rotational player. I think he's versatile enough to play the edge in certain sub packages. So you get a really good versatile player here. I know the Eagles are going to be looking for a true edge or maybe a cornerback or, or something else, maybe a linebacker if Jordan Hicks leaves. But I think Jeffrey Simmons offers a ton of value here at number 25. I don't think they would pass him up. I really don't. DK Metcalf at number 26 offers Andrew Luck a true number one. T.Y. Hilton, like he is, but he's you know undersized. But he is a true number one in terms of his ability and production. DK Metcalf just offers you a bigger target with great speed and athleticism. A guy that's been uh, a really good player when he's healthy at Ole Miss. Kyler Murray at number 27. All right, if you're a Raiders fan. If you're anybody and you hate this pick, hold the phone, all right? Hold the phone. There's an interesting situation with Derek Carr, and a lot of this is speculation. Uh, it seems like there could be trouble in paradise if you couldn't call Oakland a paradise. But you don't. I don't think that... John Gruden thinks that Derek Carr is his franchise option. I know Derek Carr's numbers were pretty good this past year. His play was not up to where his numbers are. Uh, people are going to hate that, but sorry. it's The truth hurts sometimes. And um, there's a good chance that John Gruden wants to draft his own quarterback, which he's shown that a lot in the past, that he likes to do that. So I think that it wouldn't be out of the question to see the Raiders think about quarterback here, maybe in the second round, maybe early, maybe in the first round. And for John Gruden to come out and say recently that he doesn't think size matters anymore at quarterback, that he doesn't care about short QBs, does he say, hey, let's get an electric Heisman winning dual threat quarterback to be our franchise guy, maybe play him a year under Derek Carr and then look to trade Carr Maybe you have a quarterback controversy. I think that's. I think this makes a lot of sense for the Raiders and to what the craziness that John Gruden could pull off on draft night. I don't know why, man. I just, I got a feeling about Kyler Murray to the Raiders. And hey, Kyler Murray got drafted by the Oakland Athletics. Oakland, Oakland? I don't know. I'm just saying the stars seem to be aligning on this one. I don't know. Number 28, Christian Wilkins. Way better than a, a top 28 player. But in a draft where all these defensive linemen are falling due to the true quality of the entire defensive tackle class, Christian Wilkins falls to 28. He goes to the Chargers, who desperately need an interior presence on that defensive line. DeAndre Baker to the Chiefs. This could be a safety. This could be a linebacker. This could be a defensive lineman. Could also be a cornerback, man. They got to go defense here with this pick. Uh, I also wouldn't be shocked to see this go Josh Jacobs at halfback. He's a first-round player that isn't in my mock draft. He is just the way it works out, the value of running back nowadays. I don't know, man. Uh, DeAndre Baker could be another really good cornerback option for you. You got Kendall Fuller. You got DeAndre Baker. DeAndre Baker being more of a true traditional boundary number one. Kendall Fuller having most of his success in the past be in the slot. I think that's where he fits the best. You need help at cornerback badly. DeAndre Baker offers that. Number 30, Jonathan Abram to the Green Bay Packers out of Mississippi State. He could be the best safety in this class, man. It's so close. It's so weird. His egg ball tape is unbelievable. He showed up like the best safety in the entire draft against Ole Miss, but he was a little bit inconsistent the rest of the season, man. Some games he was great. Some games he was bad. So you, you get a really, really high ceiling with this guy, and you need, a, you need safety help. You need a true safety you got to stop converting safeties to cornerback and cornerbacks to safety. Take a true safety. Jonathan Abram offers you versatility at slot corner, which is what you like to do with Micah Hyde, occasionally Morgan Burnett. As a box linebacker, talking about Morgan Burnett, 
did that as well. Jonathan Abram did that a lot at Mississippi State, also played over the top. This guy was all over the field and did so most of the time at a high level. Really good cover guy that flies around the field. Really good safety. Having Packers here at number 30. Mac Wilson to the Rams, who we have. This is not that I have the Patriots winning the Super Bowl, although I do. Spoiler. Um, Mac Wilson, linebacker here to the Rams. They need help at the position pretty badly, uh, especially someone that can come by, stop the run. Mac Wilson offers that. He's also a pretty good cover guy as well. So uh, I think he offers you a really good traditional linebacker that can kind of do it all. And then number 32, we got Nikhil Harry going to the New England Patriots. Not really a traditional Patriots receiver, if you catch my drift. I don't know if he's hardworking, hard-nosed, gritty, tough. You get what I'm saying here? You know, first guy in, last guy out. Maybe, maybe he is. <laughs> I might be alluding to something else. Um, hard-nosed, did I say that? Tough, gritty, did I say any of these? <laughs> he's got a lot of tenacity for the game. Oh man, Nikhil Harry, number thirty-two, the Patriots. This is a, this is a really fun weapon for Tom Brady's. What this is going to come down to if Tom Brady's playing football for the New England Patriots next year? I don't really think they go QB here. Maybe they look to do that in the second round. I'm not sure. It depends on Brady. This could be a quarterback. Could be a Will Greer. Could be a Ryan Finley. Could be a lot of guys. But if Tom Brady's your quarterback next year, which it seems like he might be, Tom Brady says he wants to play till he's forty-five, which I don't know how true that is, but. He said it. You don't go quarterback right now. You say, hey, Tom Brady probably coming off another Super Bowl win. Let's give you a weapon. A true weapon. No, None of this Julian Edelman, Chris Hogan, Wes Welker. Obviously, Welker not on the team anymore for a while, but I don't know if you're picking up what I'm putting down here. Uh, <laughs> Braxton Barrios, Barrios. Nikhil Harry, beast receiver. This is like your, uh, your Randy Moss, even though he doesn't have the speed or anything like that. Uh, Nikhil Harry is a beast, man. Tom Brady gets a true weapon. But that's going to do it for this mock draft, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. I'm sure, per usual, it's going to be an absolute disaster. And uh, I am happy to ignore these comments. See you in the next one. Take it easy.